we've left out on this model. Here Rex has made a transparent radiator so you can see what happens inside. The hot water, fresh from the boiler, builds up at the top and then as it gives out its heat slowly falls until it goes through the outlet and back to the boiler. Although radiators are simple things, they can stop working. Air can become trapped inside and this stops the circulation. This is why radiators have bleed valves on top. Radiators can also corrode. In this old radiator you can see how much debris has accumulated. The corrosion insulates the water inside the radiator and reduces its efficiency at giving out heat. Modern systems usually have chemicals added to the water to reduce the corrosion. Of course all the radiators and other bits and pieces are joined together by copper pipes. There are two common sorts of connector used to join the pipes together. This sort's called a compression fitting and it's rather ingenious. Inside are these soft copper rings called olives. And when I tighten the uh, nuts up, this uh, squashes the olive against the pipe and makes the joint watertight. If a joint like this leaks, you can often stop it by just tightening up the nuts a bit. You can see the solder inside this sort of fitting. It's called a Yorkshire connector. The end of the pipes are first coated with flux. Then, when the joint is heated, the flux cleans the metal and the solder flows out and seals the joint. These fittings are cheaper than compression fittings, but if a joint like this leaks, it can be tricky because it has to be completely dry before resoldering. This is a basic solid fuel boiler. It's simply a coal fire surrounded by a jacket full of water, a sort of double bowl shape. It's designed so as much heat as possible is transferred to the water though the top of the boiler has to be left open or the fire wouldn't draw properly. This boiler is probably only transferring about 50% of the fire's heat to the water. The other 50% is wasted up the chimney. An ingeniously simple way of heating a whole building from a single coal fire without a boiler was used in the Danish war office. Cannonballs were heated in a basement stove until red hot. They were then carried to every room and deposited glowing in the fireplaces several times a day. This was possibly the first ever coal-fired central heating system and remained in use until about 1900. Oh. Although coal was the first fuel to be used, today oil and gas-fired boilers are more common. Oil-fired boilers are a bit more complicated. This is the wall flame type, and the oil comes in right at the bottom under an electric motor. This is the shaft of the motor, and as it whizzes round and round, the centrifugal force pushes the oil outwards and upwards through these tubes, and it comes out the end as a fine spray. This spray is ignited by an electric spark. Oil-fired boilers like this tend to be less wasteful of heat than solid fuel. The water being heated sits between the double walls of the boiler, just like in the coal one. Rex uses the spark units from these boilers to create the Jacob's Ladder effect you sometimes see in films as part of Frankenstein-style laboratories. back to central heating boilers. Gas was first used only for lighting and the original gas lights were just holes in the pipes. 
Gas mantles weren't discovered until the 20th century. These early gas lights weren't very effective, but they were a bit brighter and less messy than candles. But then, in 1855, Professor Robert Wilhelm von Bunsen published his findings on the effects of mixing air with the gas before it was burnt. In this, his Bunsen burner, the gas comes out of a little nozzle and uh, goes up a tube. And a variable amount of air can be drawn in through the side of the tube. As the air is added, the gas burns more efficiently and the yellow colour caused by the unburnt particles of carbon disappears. With this temperature probe, you can see that this is the gas burning alone. And then when I add the air, the temperature goes up quite dramatically. I can see the tip of the probe getting red hot. And for the first time, this made it practical to use gas for heating. Happy in the morning, cause the water's hot. We can bath an army, the ascot does the lot. Happy after breakfast, cause the water's hot. Dirty, greasy dishes are left without a blot. Cleaning house has no more fears, the ascot's waiting there. Saving money, sighs and tears, an endless wear and tear. Happy in the evening, as we know we've got water, water everywhere, and always boiling hot. The ascot works in exactly the same principle as the modern gas central heating boiler. These sorts of boilers do look much more compact than other types, and that's because instead of a large water jacket, a small amount of water flows continuously through these pipes above the flames, getting hotter as it goes. These fins help transfer heat from the flames to the pipes. <coughs> it also all looks rather more flimsy than other sorts of boilers, but this is because gas burns with a much cleaner and less corrosive flame than anything else, and so the metal just doesn't need to be so thick. And the thinner the metal, the less energy that's wasted heating it up every time the boiler comes on. The gas comes out of this row of jets. And then it draws air into these tubes just like in the Bunsen burner, and then it burns in this array of flames. Many gas boilers have a balanced flue. This is basically just a hole in the wall, and the air comes in through this hole, goes around the outside and up through the middle of the boiler, and then the exhaust gases come out through the same hole. Unlike the Norman horizontal chimneys, this actually works because the whole unit is totally sealed and the pressure of the air coming in exactly equals or balances the pressure of the exhaust gases coming out. And that's why it's called a balanced flue. It often seems rather wasteful when you feel all the heat coming out of one of these things when the boiler's on. But uh, in fact, gas-powered boilers are really quite efficient and up to three quarters of the heat of the fire is transferred to the water. In an open fire, only a quarter of the heat may be transferred to the room and three quarters of it may be lost up the chimney. But of course you don't notice that because your chimneys are usually out of reach. The most common sort of electric central heating doesn't use boilers at all. By placing this hot brick in the cold water, you can see the energy stored in the brick. This is basically the principle behind electric night storage radiators.